get started with our New American Majority Reception Remarks, so please feel free to come on up and listen. Um, there's plenty of seating at the moment, and um, I would love to introduce you to our two speakers for this reception. We wanted to focus specifically on members of the New American Majority, women who are people of color, LGBTQ, under 35, and unmarried. And those are the future of our government, and so we are eager to have as many women like that training in our programs together with us. So I am really excited to introduce our first speaker for the evening. Esther Charleston is an alum of the class of 22, and she is doing amazing work here in Vermont. Esther, I'm thrilled you're here, and thank you so much for coming. Good evening, everyone. Let's cheer. Ten years. Ten years we get to celebrate. It is a great honor to be with all of you this evening. I am Esther Charleston. I am Haitian American. I am a Vermonter by choice. I moved here four years ago with my children, and it was one of the best decisions I've made. I am the daughter to Haitian immigrants, Anita and Glasha Chalestan. And I am a graduate of Emerge class of 2022. So as we celebrate this evening, we celebrate those that have come before us. And one of those folks, who is no longer with us, but the former state representative, Bright, the first black American to serve in Vermont state legislature. She laid the foundation that opened doors of what is possible for someone like me, a Haitian American, Vermonter by choice, woman, to have the audacity to run in Vermont and win. As a person who ran for the Middlebury Select Board in 2021, I had the audacity. Yes, thank you, Kai. <laughs> and I won, joined the Middlebury Select Board, and knew that I needed to learn quick. So I decided to apply for Emerge. And in 2022, I had the honor of going through the program and running and winning and getting, I was the top vote getter for 2022. Celebrate that, come on now. The skills that I learned at Emerge helped me become a better leader. I understood the system that was at play. At first I ran, I had a lot of people to help me. The second time I ran, I now knew how to work the machine because of Emerge and through the teachers that I had. So I am honored and grateful. And it has helped me to continue my path for politics in Vermont. More to come. Yay, yes, let's celebrate that as well. And of course, um, tonight we also have with us our honored guest, Ashanti Golar. Is that it? Okay, let's go. Let's celebrate Ashanti tonight. Yes, who serves as president of Emerge. I'll be honest with you. Come on now. Yes, okay, first black woman, let's celebrate. I will never forget during my graduation when Ashanti, you came on the screen and I was like, yes. Yes, so honored to have you here. And we know that you are, if you don't know, now you know, she is a nationally recognized political strategist. So for over 15 years has, a gra has been a grassroots organizer and activist for women. Yes, let's celebrate that. <laughs> Communities of color and progressive causes. And the list goes on and on. And now we have her here with us. So help me welcome Ashanti Gohar. Thank you, 
Esther for that beautiful introduction. Good evening, everyone. How are you doing? I'm Ashanti Bola. I have the honor and privilege of being the president of Emerge. And this is my first time in Vermont. And to be here to celebrate 10 years with all of you is extremely exciting. My journey with Emerge actually started in 2006 when I got an email from a woman named Maria Stark asking me if I would come to an introductory meeting about bringing this organization called Emerge to Nevada because they felt that they could change the face of politics in our state. And that really intrigued me. At the time, I was working for Congresswoman Shelley Berkeley, who was the only woman in our congressional delegation and our highest ranking woman in the state. But I was also the president of the Young Democrats of Nevada, and it was created in the 1960s. But I was the first woman to hold the president position in the Young Dems of Nevada in 2006. So this intrigued me. I wanted to know more. And it honestly seems just like yesterday, we were in a conference room of former Congressman Jim Bill Bray talking about, could we do this? Could we actually have the audacity as women who didn't have party positions, who weren't the gatekeepers, who didn't have the deep pocketbooks to actually dare to train Democratic women to run for office? And we knew we wanted to do that. Fast forward, I had left Nevada and I was at the Democratic National Committee on my second tour of duty, as we like to call them. And in that role, I had a really awesome job. I was the National Deputy Director of Community Engagement, the Director of African American Engagement, and I centered my work on women because we are the base of the Democratic Party. But there was always an area when women called me that I could not help them and it upset me and it was when they wanted to run for office. I was in my position because of other women who had uplifted me, supported me, and believed in me, but I had to tell other women that I couldn't help them. And that just didn't sit right with me. One night I went home and I started thinking about the future and what I wanted to do and I knew that it had to be with getting women more politically and civically involved, especially a run for office. Two days after I decided that was my path, Emerge posted a job description for their first political director. If you manifest it, it will come. <laughs> I knew that was the job that I wanted. It was the only job that I applied for. A few weeks ago, we actually did our Pioneering Women of Labor event, and I got to honor my friend Julie Green Collier, who is the first black woman chief of staff for the National AFL-CIO. And I got to tell everyone a fun fact that it was actually Julie's office that I went to hide in to do my Emerge interviews. <laughs> and now as the president of Emerge, I got to honor her. So that was a nice full circle moment. I left the DNC in 2016 to go to Emerge. DNC really wasn't happy with me about doing that, but I knew it was where I wanted to be. And that year, I saw so many women who were excited about Secretary Clinton's run for office to have that representation. But like most of us in the Democratic Party at Emerge, we didn't plan for the election day that we had. And I remember that evening talking to my colleagues saying, what's going to happen? We did not have a plan B. But what happened the next day was women calling us, women emailing us, women DMing us, because they wanted to run for office. They woke up the next day and they said, if not Hillary, then who? Then me, it has to be me. I have to be the one to step up and run for office. And I was just so annoyed by all of the people who were crediting that man for all of the women that were running for office. And I got a call from a reporter who's like, what do you have to say about that? And I'm like, let me be clear. This is the Hillary effect. This is why representation matters. Because these women know, because of her, 
Even though she didn't shatter that highest glass ceiling, there are so many still at the local and state and national level that we can still shatter. We grew rapidly at Emerge. We expanded to new states, which I got to oversee as political director. We started doing our boot camps, taking the signature program down to two weeks, two and a half weekends. And we saw the victories. In Virginia, we got to see seats that were held by white Republican men flip to diverse Democratic women. In 2018, we saw the first members of Emerge get elected to Congress. And what I loved about 2019 and 2020 is the women that were inspired by Hillary were now inspiring the next generation to step up and run. Because they also saw women that looked like them. They saw single mothers. They saw women who had experienced being unhoused. Women who had to declare bankruptcy because of the financial crisis. We were creating not just a reflective government, but an inclusive government at large. And we know that in 2020, we got to see our first woman vice president with Kamala Harris. And when I sat down with the team in 2020, thinking about the next vision of Emerge, we had done all of this expansion, but what was the future? And when we looked 10 years, 20 years, 30 years down the road, it was very evident that the new American majority was going to continue to rise. They were the ones that had been fueling these democratic victories across the country, and we knew it was time for them not just to be the voters, but for them to put their name on the ballot. What we did was really bold. We created a 15-year plan that centered the new American majority with three pillars. The first, reaching 100,000 women of the new American majority. Black, brown, and indigenous women, women of color, young women, unmarried women, LGBTQ women. And I'm so proud to say that Emerge Vermont was one of our very first affiliates to fully embrace this vision because they knew that it would be effective in Vermont. The second piece, fostering a lift as we climb culture. We currently have trained 6,000 women to run in the Emerge Network. Over 1,200 of them currently serve in elected office, from our first Indigenous Cabinet Secretary, Deb Holland, to the women here in Vermont, all the way down to school boards, city councils, sheriffs, judges, prosecutors. But we just don't believe that women have to bloom where they're planted. That's what the patriarchy teaches us. We know that they can run for higher office. They have the old boys club. I like to say we're building the new girls network. So that means having a lift as we climb culture, having them run for higher office, but us being strategic and making sure that when they do run for higher office, we're reaching back and having another Emerge alum who can run for the seat that they're vacating so we do not lose progress. And the third piece, doing what we do best at Emerge, repowering political structures, focusing on all levels of office. If you look at the top 10 states that have the most women serving in state houses, Emerge has affiliates in nine out of 10 of those states. Nevada, New Mexico, Oregon, Colorado created the first majority women state legislative chambers due to Emerge alums. We have our focus on women in law enforcement, we just launched our Gavel In program, which has already won an award for making sure that we have more women running for judicial seats. Because we know that the road to the Supreme Court starts at the state and local level. We created Seated Together, the first in the nation program that focuses on supporting current black women elected officials to run for higher office. And we are in the middle of establishing our school board curriculum. And I don't think I need to say why that is important. We know that we are effective at training women to run for office, but when they're running for these school board positions, they're going to need additional support with everything that they're dealing with. This is the Emerge vision. This is the Emerge network. And I'm just so proud of everything that we have been able to accomplish and to everyone who really loves this vision and supports this vision. I came on as president in February 2020, right before the pandemic. Also coming on as the first black woman to lead our organization. And I knew that, thank you. 
and I knew the things that we were doing were going to be bold and different, but they are the things that have continued to make us one of the best and most effective organizations in democratic politics with the best return on investment. I'm so excited to be here with all of you. I see we have more people coming in. 10 years is amazing, but I know in Emerge Vermont, you all are just getting started, and I cannot wait to see what the next 10 years is going to bring. Thank you. It's wonderful to see so many people here this evening. Thank you so much for coming to celebrate Emerge Vermont's 10th anniversary. We're so glad you're here. Tonight is going to be a wonderful evening of gratitude and appreciation for how far we've come and for how far we are still going to go. There are so many VIPs in the audience tonight. I'm not, a, not gonna be able to shout out to everybody, but I see people like Jill Barkley Roy, the affiliate director of Emerge. I see Mia Schultz, one of our Truth and Reconciliation Commissioners. I see Esther Charleston, the first woman of color to serve on the Millbury Select Board. I see, do I see Cherry Clark, our first woman, woman elected Attorney General. There are so many wonderful people here tonight. Thank you for being here. Our Toastmasters this evening are going to be wonderful as well. Getting very excited to introduce to you Ashanti Golar, the president of Emerge. Another Toastmaster this evening is our own Joan Glennis, the wonderful cabinet member. And we were hoping to have um, Representative Becca Ballin be one of our Toastmasters. Unfortunately, she is not able to be here this evening due to shenanigans in Washington. So, Speaker of the House Jill Krowinski has very gamely agreed to step in. And of course, our honored guest, Governor Madeline Tunin will be here shortly as well. So I have a little bit of housekeeping for all of you. Um, restrooms are in the rear next to the bar, and the hors d'oeuvres are out and ready for you. If you're a little warm, feel free to go out on the deck or out on the patio. Um, please feel free to take lots of pictures and tag Emerge Vermont. You can take selfies over at the selfie booth. And um, we're going to do things a little differently than you might normally see at a political event like this. We're going to do some toasts and we're going to express some gratitude, but not a lot of really long speeches, so that's pretty great. And after the Cunin Award presentation, we will sing happy birthday to our beloved founder. We have cupcakes. And then the dancing starts. So it's going to be a really fun evening. I hope you can stay as long as possible. We're thrilled that you're here. Um, and by the way, my name is Elaine Haney. I'm the Executive Director of Earth for Mind. And I am really excited to introduce to you our first Toastmaster of the evening. Ashanti Gowar is the president of Emerge. And for over 15 years, she has been a grassroots organizer and activist for women, communities of color, and progressive causes. She's the former National Deputy Director of Community Engagement and Director of African American Engagement for the Democratic National Committee. Ashanti has also served as the Manager of Partnerships for United Way Worldwide and as a political appointee in the Obama administration in the U.S. Department of Labor and as the Director of Public Engagement for the 2012 Democratic National Convention Committee in North Carolina. She's been called a political influencer, a woman of color in policy, and a change maker. She is also a Sisters on the Planet ambassador for Oxfam, along with our alum Kaya Morris. And she is an equity advisor for Sephora and an advisory board member for Global Game. She is also the founder of the award-winning podcast, The Brown Girl's Guide to Politics. It is my honor to introduce to you and to welcome to Vermont for the very first time, Ashanti Gobar. Thank you, Elaine. We are just so lucky to have you leading Vermont. 
Good evening, everyone. I am Ashanti Golar, and as I like to say, I have the honor and privilege of being the president of the Emerge Network. It is so good to be with you all tonight as we celebrate 10 years, a strong decade of Emerge Vermont. I want to say a thank you to the host committee for everything that you have done to make this event a success, and of course to all of our wonderful Toastmasters, including the Speaker of the House, who we will hear from, Joan Linus, AKA my Joan, as I like to call her, Rep. Sadia Lamont, and two women who are not only my Emerge sisters, but who have become my sisters in life, former Rep. Kaya Morris, and State Senator Rams Hinsdale. A thank you to all of our Emerge alums who are with us this evening. And I do have to take a point of personal privilege to recognize a man in the room, the first person who actually gave me my very first national position in democratic politics as the co-chair of the DNC Youth Council, Governor Howard Dean. The work that our Emerge alums do fighting for women and families in Vermont is inspiring the next generation of women leaders to run for office. And it's always so special for me to spend time in the states to support our executive directors and get to know everyone and to be here to celebrate Emerge Vermont on what is the autumn equinox, which is all about fresh new beginnings. And I know for Emerge Vermont, that's as they embark on their next 10-year journey. I want to thank Elaine for everything that you do as our dedicated executive director. Emerge Vermont is doing the work to empower the next generation of Democratic women to lead. Across the Emerge Network, we have been doing this for almost 20 years. But in 10 years, Emerge Vermont has trained over 200 women on how to run for office. 81% of Emerge Vermont alums won their elections last November, one of the highest win rates in our network. Right now across the state, Emerge Vermont alums and trainees hold a total of 123 elected and appointed offices at all levels of government. And the Vermont legislature is now 45% women the highest that has ever been, and is led by the Lord of God. When we talk about these successes, these wins would not have been possible without the work of the community that powers Emerge Vermont. And we know that it started with the founder of Emerge Vermont, former Vermont Governor Madeline Keenan. We know that it's the Emerge Vermont Cabinet, our executive directors over the years, the donors, the supporters, and the Emerge alums that have kept it going. While I know that this year has been particularly challenging for folks in Vermont due to the catastrophic flooding, as I saw what was happening on the ground here, I saw the power of Emerge alums in response to the floods. Every picture on the news that we saw outside of Vermont Bam, there's Congresswoman Balin. Bam, there's Senator Rams Hinsdale. Bam, there was Emerge alum after Emerge alum who were serving in their elected capacities doing the work. But the reality is all of our alums who were serving were doing what they do best. They're being public servants and leaders because that is the heart of who our Emerge alums are and that is the heart of the women that we train. Sending women of the community into public office means that the community has power in times of trouble. That's what we're building at Emerge, community power. We know that community power means that families are supported, as evidenced by the Emerge alums who work to pass the Affordable Heat Act and an unprecedented universal child care bill this year especially Speaker of the Vermont House, Joe Kowinski, and Senator Ruth Hardy, both former EGs of the Vermont.
We know that community power means protecting the rights of the people. Seen in Vermont amending your state constitution to protect reproductive liberty last year. We know that was something that so many Emerge alums fought to accomplish. That's why it has never, ever been more important to elect women of the community in Vermont. For Emerge, we know that that means women of the new American majority, a huge part of our vision nationally and here. Supporting black, brown, and indigenous women, women of color, LGBTQ women, young women, and unmarried women. And to all of the Emerge alums, in the room who are part of the new American majority, I have to say, I see you. And thank you. I know that so many of you are the first. You're in rooms where you're the only, but you're still there, and you're doing the work. And you're fostering a lift as we climb culture, which is another part of the Emerge Values, making sure that while you're the first, you won't be the last, as our Vice President likes to say. And it's by having you all in this network that we know that Emerge will help continue to make Vermont better. Because we have all Emerge women, especially our Emerge women of the New American Majority serving, bringing that lived experience to the table. This only creates better policies for everyone in Vermont, but we know that those policies will impact us all nationally. So thank you. We know that in the next two decades, the United States will achieve its multiracial and multicultural destiny. These changes are an opportunity to shore up individual freedoms, protect civil rights, and finally build an inclusive democracy attack against attacks from these right-wing extremists because we all we know they are just wilding out right now. <laughs> we can never be a fully-fledged democracy until we have a fully inclusive democracy. Having women of the new American majority in elected office is the difference between a real democracy and an aspiring one. And I know all of this, all of us in this room want a real democracy. That's why the work of Emerge Vermont is doing with recruiting and training women is so important. Emerge continues to build the bench at every level of office. I'm so excited about Elaine's new vision that she's going to be doing doubling down, focusing on local offices, which we know we need more women running in at this point. Our vision of reaching 100,000 women of the new American majority, training women at all levels of office, and changing the face of politics is why we are all here tonight, to repower these political structures. Our nation's political future lies with Democratic women. They are the leaders we need to win the ongoing fight for equality and to shape this nation into something we all can believe in. And Vermont is electing women in record numbers to live up to this promise. Congratulations to everyone who has a part in building the Emerge Vermont community dedicated to pipelining women of the new American majority, women across Vermont, into power. Thank you, former Governor Kuhn. Thank you to Elaine Haley and all of our former Emerge Vermont ADs, to the cabinet, to the donors, to the supporters, and especially to all of the Emerge Vermont alums. It truly means so much to me that all of you have chosen Emerge to be a part of your political journey, and that is not something that I take lightly. You truly are the heart and soul of this network. And now, we toast our Merge Vermont founder, former Governor Kunin. Governor, look at what you did. Look around this room and see what you have built. In just two years, you have brought all of these people together to grow something beautiful. Power for women in the Vermont community. Thank you for your vision and your steadfastness in building out Emerge Vermont. Thank you for 10 years, and everyone, here is to another 10 years of success across Vermont 
with everything that Emerge is doing to build long-term political power. And as we like to say at Emerge, I have so much Emerge love for you, Governor, for all of our executive directors, our donors, our supporters, and of course, our alums. Thank you all for having me here this evening. and were 
bearing the consequence of state legislatures being predominantly Republican. And that's why issues like abortion are so powerful at the state level. And that's why it's so important for Vermont to be one of those states that gets it right. <laughs> we have to remain strong and I guess in this group I could say democratic. <laughs> but it's so important not only on the question of abortion, which is almost unbelievable what's happening nationally. I mean, I never dreamt when I was elected that we would walk backwards, and but we are, we are backwards right now, and we must do everything in our power to make sure Vermont stays strong. And not only the issue of abortion, but democracy itself is is being challenged, and it's not in obvious ways sometimes. It's just little by little, there are nicks in the structure of democracy. And Vermont, again, is a good example of sticking to our American patriotism and really interpreting it that votes count People should be allowed to vote without restrictions or jumping over hoops without the, the other side trying to suppress the vote. So there are lots of issues, and I know these are tough times, and sometimes it's hard to turn on the TV without getting a headache. <laughs> but, We've got to be vigilant. We've got to keep the faith. And your presence here shows that you care, and not only care, but take action. Uh, the contributions to emerge are hugely important. Uh, it's, it's a small donation, but it goes a long way. And sometimes I'm asked, why do you need emerge? Uh, we still need it because it takes guts to run for office. We need it because we need the encouragement and the, we need to practice what we preach, not only in terms of message, but in terms of actually knowing how to preach without going to church. <laughs> but we preach the good gospel of freedom and democracy and opportunity and fairness and, and really acting on our beliefs. And the legislature in Vermont, 45% female. That's beautiful. And we can even increase it after that. But thank you for asking me to speak. Thank you for inviting me here. I feel like a mother who has had many children. <laughs> and I'm very grateful for what you have done and what you continue to do. And you've elected people like, like Becca Ballot, who's in Washington now, and can't be here tonight like Sarah Copeland Hanges, like Charity Clark. Those are all firsts. And <laughs> it makes a difference. It makes a difference. And every person who you give courage to, every person who learns how to speak in front of a mic, every person who knows how to raise money for a campaign, you are giving birth to a new force for good in Vermont. Thank you.
as a cabinet member for eight years or so. But right from the beginning, I was not at Madeline's, in Madeline's living room that day, but ever since I've been on board, a supporter, a carer, and a, a believer. It's amazing to have everyone here tonight. The barn is beautiful and the barn is full with all of you. We could not be here doing our work. We could not have the number of alums and our successes without all of you. Without our donors supporting us from the very, very beginning, we would not be here today, 10 years old. In our early days, we started with a single executive director, Sarah McCall, and a dedicated group of volunteers who served as advisors and trainers. Forward 10 years later, and we are still an organization with one incredible executive director and a group of volunteers. Yes, to Elaine. We've been laughing as we've been planning this. Elaine has said, all right, now I'm going to be your taskmaster. And I texted her late last night and thanked her for that because she kept me on task. Um, our focus is entirely on the women we train and every dime we receive from all of you over the years is invested in strengthening that training and reaching as many women as possible. Emerge Vermont is powered entirely by Vermonters. There are some donors who have made significant contributions that helped us get started. Many of them still support Emerge Vermont substantially to this day. And every year, we are blessed to welcome new supporters who embrace our mission and give generously to ensure it can continue. The word spreads. So the word of mouth, actually, a, a, a friend tonight said she needed to stop over and drop something off. And I said, no, I'm at a fundraiser. She said, for what? I said, Emerge Vermont. She said, is it worth supporting? She just texted. She's given me $100 tomorrow. It's worth, it's worth constantly talking. Um, I'd like to share the names of just some. And this is hard because some won't be on the list, but these were our early, early supporters and have made it possible for us to train the women who are changing the world and increasing women's representation on city councils, on school boards, in the legislature, in the executive branch, and in Congress. Uh, Catherine Harha, uh, Congressman Becca Balin, Arthur Bernard, Jan Blomstrom, Tiff Bloomley and Liz Shane, Jessica Brumstead, Donna and Jake Carpenter, Dottie Deans and Lydia Spitzer, Michael DeSanto, Abigail Faulkner, Maxine Brad, Barbarina Heyerdahl, Patricia Heiberg, Rebecca Holcomb, Cree Linolak, Melinda Moulton, Beth Pierce, Dwayne and Laura Peterson, Ernie Parmelo, Susan Ritz, Jennifer Savage, Lisa Steele, Jane Stetson, Senator Peter Welch, Margie and Peter Stern, and Lola Van Wagner. There are hundreds, hundreds more. Thank you. Thank you. Whether it's a $5 contribution, $1,000, a, a, a monthly donation, we benefit and so do all of you because of who we put at the table. And Madeline, you're the one who taught me the conversation is different when women are at the table. And I thank you for that message and, and it's so true. So, this is a big deal tonight. And I am so proud to be here, to be a part of this group, and to know so many of you, and hopefully meet all of you. And we've got friends, and family, and colleagues, and comrades in spirit here. So let's lift our glass and say thank you to all of you who are here helping this happen.
I'll mingle a little more and then more um, toasts in a bit. Thank you all. holding office right now, will you please make your presence known? I mean, really, yes, come on. Do it. I love it. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jill Krowinski. I'm the speaker of the Vermont House. I have, um, I, I'm filling in for my super great friend, Congresswoman Becca Ballant, uh, as you know, the first woman to be elected from Vermont to serve in Congress. So Becca can't be here tonight because of the ongoing events unfolding in Washington, a consequence of the shenanigans by the Republicans who seem determined to undermine democracy, but we will push forward here tonight. She sends, Becca sends her sincere regrets that she can't be here and wants you all to know that she is raising a glass to all of her fellow, uh, fellow alums from afar in DC. As you probably know, she is an Emerge alum of our class of 2014, which was our very first Emerge class. So Becca also asked me to give a shout out to her fellow Emerge alums who are currently serving in Congress with her. There are eight alums serving in the U.S. House. And I love this, I love this so much. The Emerge Congressional Caucus <laughs> collaborate, support each other, and keep the Emerge Sisterhood alive, even in the chaos that's happening in D.C. And as I look around this room, it's clear that the Emerge Network here is also alive and thriving. It's hard to believe that it's been 10 years. I remember sitting at Madeline's kitchen table with Keisha and Sarah, and we began plotting away, and then before we knew it, every meeting, more and more women were joining us, and every meeting, it just expanded, and now look at the size of Emerge! The message that I want you to take with you tonight, the Emerge Vermont Network, is that we need you now more than ever. We need you to run, we need you to lead, and we need you to support campaigns. I can't emphasize that enough as we see what's happening across the country, and I'm so proud of the work that we did this last legislative session and sessions before, and I could list all the amazing things that we've done from housing to childcare to workforce development, to the child tax credit, expanding the earned income tax credit, amazing work. But I think what's really helpful is just to hear a couple stories of just like what that means and what your work, whether you're supporting people running for office or if you run for office and you're serving and you're just taking up those bills and you're getting things done. But what's important is just to know how it's playing out. I can't tell you what it was like when I was handed the updated Vermont Constitution with Article 22 in it. <laughs> Vermont is leading the way on reproductive rights. We passed two SHIELD bills protecting providers uh, on the healthcare side and the judiciary side to make sure we're doing everything we can to protect and expand reproductive rights. We also did tremendous work around suicide prevention. We had a governor who told us that this bill wasn't going to save lives. After several vetoes of a waiting period, we passed a 72-hour waiting period. message saying that the law had worked and that a young man had tried to buy a gun and he was turned away and he is alive today because of that bill. So we need to come together, we need to
to forge a path forward for a better future. And I have the honor of working this toast for our alums, and there's so many people doing so many amazing things. But to every alum who has ran or served in office while also caring for a young family or an elderly parent working a full-time job or going to school, to every alum that has worked tirelessly knocking on doors when they were told they should be home with their kids, to every alum who has passionately volunteered for a campaign for a woman that they believed in, to every alum who has been working their way within the Democratic leadership in our towns, in our counties, and across the state, to every alum who suddenly found themselves leading a natural disaster recovery effort in their community, Amanda, and to every alum, and to every alum who has fought for legislation that lifts up working families and creates a better life for our children, it's time to toast. Please lift your glass. To every person who is trained with Emerge and to the generation of Emerge graduates to come, cheers. That's a bit of a heartbreak. And for many here in Vermont, until she passed, her story was not spoken about. Since that time, we have seen so many incredible, powerful women of color step up and choose to run, choose to serve the state. We don't have to. We literally have so many other things we can do. But we choose to do so again and again because we understand, because you know, actually, black women have been caring in this country. Mm -hmm. our, our democratic and our progressive parties are built on the labor of black women who stood in solidarity with other folks and said we will not stand for it. And yet we were not in the places of power. We were organizing. We were mobilizing, but were we making the decisions? Were we making an impact? And would that impact have lasting 
measure. And so here I am as the second, and I'm here with my sister, who is the third. And doing so happened in a way that did not require for us to change who we are, to diminish our blackness, to diminish our womanhood, to diminish our experiences. We were able to say, you can do this too. I don't care if you were formerly houseless. I don't care if you have a criminal record. I don't care if you grew up in poverty. These halls belong to you. And that is what Nuve has set the stage for everything else to come. And now we have black women in every role, even including Hi Bailiff. Yeah. <laughs> yes, black women impacting the criminal justice system and our corrupt law enforcement. That means some oversight. Some black women oversight. Right? Am I wrong? I regret that I did not get to know Lavinia. I regret that there was not already a system in place to make sure that I knew who she was, that I knew her story, what her struggles are. I feel blessed to have been able to have been mentored by folks like Governor Madden Kunin and understanding what that was like for her to be the first, the only. I don't know Lavinia's story. We can't stand for that. We will not stand for it, no. And so we stand here today in solidarity with so many women. I am so proud to have Mia Schultz here. I'm so proud. I'm so proud to have Senator Hinsdale here. I'm so proud. Look, 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 look. You see the ways that we cheer each other. You see the ways that we hold each other because this is sacred and beautiful, it is painful, it is caustic, it is deadly to us, but we do it because it's necessary in order to save our freaking democracy. And to get us to the place where we are and where we need to be. And Lavenia Breed believed in that. She believed in that wholeheartedly. And I'm so excited. There's her son right there on the camera. Yeah, your mama did a thing. She did a thing that made it possible for me to be here, for everybody to be here, and for us to transform this world. And I'm so grateful that my sister Ashanti is here. Because when we talk about the importance of black women in politics, we're like, oh, we gotta go to Georgia. Let's go make our way to Texas. Let's go take over some Florida. But Vermont has been the first for so many of our human and civil rights. Vermont has been the litmus test for everywhere else in the country. And if it can happen here, it can happen elsewhere. And if there's someone who has the courage to step up and lead, it is women. It is the new global majority. And it is not something that's 40 years in the past, it is today. It is every day. I stand in great reverence, in so much love, and in so much caring for the beauty of my experience, for the pain of my experience, for the cost, the cost of what it takes to do this authentic leadership that is rooted in our ways of being. And I'm so grateful to share this moment. So I've pontificated, <laughs> I've waxed on, Hopefully I sounded pithy. You got a Twitter quote. Y'all got your social tags. <laughs> Understand this is a merge. I would not have won if not for a merge. I will say that without a doubt because I had no idea what it meant when somebody asked me to run for office. I was like, what's that? That's cute. I just got laid off of work. I'm on food stamps. What does that mean? I got a kid. I don't even know what that looks like. How does this happen? And I was given the tools, I was given the training, I was given the courage for me to push forth. And it wasn't easy. It was extremely difficult, it was thoroughly lonely, but I did it. And in doing so, somebody else is always watching. Always watching. 
Mm -hmm. And this beautiful woman came to me, the Democratic, I was a Democratic fundraiser, and I'll never forget how powerful that was for her to be there with her daughter and to talk about what that meant to have that real representation. And now here she is. Y'all yeah. better take care of her, because I'm coming up to you today. in the simplest of measures, but in the most powerful of meanings. And I could not be more proud. Thank you. I'm gonna pass the beautiful mic to my sister, Sadia. Yeah. I hear you, baby. I hear you. That's what I'm saying. It's a lot. 
It's a lot, girl. <laughs> I have learned that I can only be me, wholly, truly, and authentically. Sometimes the reality of the things that I experience as the result of my identities is hard for people who don't share those identities to fathom, comprehend, or conceptualize, or empathize with, or even rationalize, considering we should be in a more progressive society that everyone has worked so hard towards. And that's the beauty. Reality is reality. Other people's inability and incapacity to believe or make sense of things that happen that don't make sense cannot stop us from sharing those things. Again, a delicacy and nuance, a balance. As truth can be scary, and I do not want to deter other women from taking the chance of going out on a limb. It can, it can be hard. It will be hard. And you can do it. <laughs> on election night, I got a card from my comms manager and my campaign staff, and the card said, leap and a net will appear. We cannot miss opportunities for a change, progression, and betterment because of fear. We also cannot do this sustainably without the support, tools, and resources and accessibility that is required. Never stop learning. Emerge trains women to run and win. Yes, yes. BLI, Bright Leadership Institute, advances BIPOC leaders. What happens when you get there? My experience with Emerge was wonderful. I learned a lot. I met wonderful women who, some who even helped in my campaign, many of whom I currently serve with. And yet, there was still more to be desired. Not from a programmatic point of view, but lacking in the perspective and understanding of lived experiences of others. I believe any woman considering entering the realm of politics, whether it be serving or supporting, should participate in Emerge. I believe women of color should participate in Emerge. With the caveat, Take what you want and leave what you don't. And I say that not to disrespect to merge, because I am so sincerely grateful for my experiences, my time, and the women with whom I have built relationships over the past year and a half. However, if I it was the much of the messaging the coursework, if I had listened and taken to from it what was intended, truth be told, I wouldn't have run. Fortunately, I would have a strong sense of self. I have an amazing team, amazing supporters in my kitchen cabinet that helped me navigate that nuance, that delicacy as it pertained to me because it is a very different experience and what I need was a little bit different and that's okay because I'm here today. Louvania did not run. I'm almost done. Wrap it up. Bring it home. Bring it home. <laughs> Lavinia did not run as the first black woman, and yet she was. I am not serving as a black woman, 
and yet there is a deep embodied enrichment through our experiences as black women that translates into our connection and understanding of people, justice, systems, resiliency, expressed beautifully with gracious tenacity, leaving legacies that pave the way for a bright future. So, as we gather here tonight for a night of gratitude and celebration, let us raise our glass to Lavinia Dorsey Bright, to the waymakers and trailblazers, past, present, and future, to the women of Emerge, cheers to 10 years. Have a great evening. <laughs> because I feel all of you wanting to give Luvenia Dorsey Bright the moment that maybe she never got to have. You know, Bill Bright is on the on FaceTime here, thanks to Representative Ann Pugh, former Representative Ann Pugh, I should say, but you know, a successor uh, in, in Luvenia's area in South Burlington. And as Bill said in the press, you know, his mom always said, keep it moving. We don't have time to dwell on how people are treating us and you know what is going wrong in our experience. We have to keep it moving. And imagine, she just kept it moving. And we should all pause in her honor. The woman that kept it moving so that we could all be here. When I think about how important that is, I want to let you all know, didn't want to interfere with raising a bunch of good money tonight for Emerge, because we love Emerge. We're going to start a process of creating a portrait of Luvenia Dorsey Bright in the State House. <laughs> second woman of color to ever serve in the legislature and the first in the Senate is, thank you, is that black women do not have to do any of the labor to get this portrait up and on the walls. This is going to be a place where particularly women and people of color can pause and can think about how she kept it moving so that they could stand there, have a place to convene, have a place to contemplate their role and their rightful ownership of that state house as well. You know, I just was giving a uh, talk at Middlebury for the 200th anniversary of Alexander Twilight's graduation from Middlebury College, and I said, I have two favorite portraits in the state house, Alexander Twilight and Governor Madeline Cunin. And there's something really special about both of those portraits, because if you look at a lot of the other portraits in the state house, no offense, Governor Dean, um, <laughs> there a lot of men like looking in the distance and looking down in thought and looking somewhere else. But those two portraits look at you and say, you belong here. You are welcome here, and you have a place here. You stay. And I've always thought of how beautiful that is. And it's, oh my gosh, it's such an honor to be 
beside Governor Madeline Kunin as she celebrates a big milestone birthday. And just think about finally putting the first portrait of a woman of color in the state house. We're gonna get there. Thanks to Elaine, thanks to Emerge, thanks to everybody who's made this possible, made my career possible. We have Bill on the phone, we have a recording going for his sister Becca and their dad, Dr. William Bright Sr., who kept his wife's legacy alive for so long and was in many ways the conduit to communicating with her. For a lot of years, it was really painful for her. But her family has stayed connected and you know, Bill and I were able to share some tears after a radio program we did and just say, We're really remembering your mom the right way. Finally, finally. I don't think Bill or I would know how much of a release it was to honor her. And here we are. And thank you all so much for being a part of that. And Bill, who's on the phone and representing his family, thanks to Representative Pugh, is going to listen in as we play pre-recorded remarks from him. They're very sorry that they couldn't be here, but they'll be back in the state and they just feel the love. This room is quiet, this event is going on early because you all are loving and supporting and honoring his family and we're extremely grateful. Thank you. And my sister, Rebecca Bright Pugh, allow me to thank Emerge of Vermont and Executive Director Elaine Haney for the work you do and for choosing my mother, Lavinia Dorsey Bright, to honor with the 2023 Governor Madeline M. Cunin Achievement Award. Thank you to Emerge America President Ashanti Goler for sharing in this moment, and a special thank you to Senator Keisha Ram Hinsdale for caring and for taking the lead role in keeping my mother's legacy alive. As many of you are aware at this point, Mom passed away on July 29th at the age of 81. And while we can't be with you in person here tonight, it's with heavy but joy-filled hearts that we accept this award on her behalf. Mom was a special person who built a career in education and government around the simple principles of race and gender equity, inclusion, and opportunity. Whether it was raising her own kids, teaching, working in the community, or in the halls of the state legislature, Ensuring fairness and opportunity for all was your driving force. And so it was early in my sophomore year at the University of Vermont when I got a call from home informing me that she was running for office. I remember being a little confused by the decision. I don't recall elected office as an expressed goal or desire. But what I do remember thinking was that it made all the sense in the world. What better place to put all of her on the groundwork to action. I have memories of walking with her on lip drops in South Burlington, acting as a chauffeur periodically to and from Montpelier around basketball practice at UVM, and the piles of mail on the dining room table which had become her de facto office in the house. It was certainly an interesting time for a political science major to experience the process from the inside. While mom loved Vermont and her time in the legislature, as you can imagine, for an African-American woman from Robbins, Illinois, Vermont posed both challenges and possibilities. As she described herself, there was an isolation that she felt with a small black community in Burlington, let alone the state, and as the only black teacher at Colchester High School and the only black woman in her neighborhood. Whether it was being ignored in stores, interrupted and talked down to in conversations, or just discounted in meetings. To quote her at the time, if I really want to be heard, I have to be louder, more vehement than everyone else. Little did she know how that one thought would carry her through her time in the legislature. And that despite those obstacles, she fought for what she believed, she fought for her respect, and she fought for her place in our community. Besides her teaching job at Colchester High School, Mom was involved in her community as among other things, Vice President of the Black Professionals Network of Vermont, a gender equity consultant to the Rural Education Center, 
a member of the Vermont State Advisory Committee to the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights, a member of the Minority Women's Business Partnership, and the local NAACP chapter. In the legislature, she was proud of her work advancing legislation on a host of issues, including teacher and state employee retirement, family leave, economic growth, affordable housing, and hate crimes. She truly brought her personal experiences to this work. That said, there was a constant pressure beyond basic politics that she fought through daily. While she was obviously elected to the seat and people rooted for her success, there were always others watching in the wings for the failure and ready to criticize in a personal way. Luckily, she had a strong village to hold her up through those times. That's why when Keisha called in early 2021 about the establishment of the Bright Leadership Institute, we could really only smile. It's what mom would have wanted because she didn't have it. A community of like-minded folks to commune and work with, learn from, and support in an environment where many times you were the only person who looked like you in a room. A place where people like Keisha, Kia Morris, and Saudi Lamont can pass on their experiences and knowledge to a new generation of leadership, building on what Madeline Cunin, Lavinia Bright, and others started all those years ago. My family and I are truly humbled by the honor you're bestowing on my mother tonight. We appreciate each and every one of you for carrying on her legacy, and we thank you for your time tonight. We thank you for the honor, and please enjoy the rest of your evening. saw snippets of this in the press, um, but Luvenia Dorsey Bright was still alive when she was selected for this award. And in fact, Elaine reached out and said, can you call the family, connect with them, tell them about the bestowing of this award? And I left a message for Bill, and when he called me back that week, he said, I'm a little freaked out because it, I didn't, haven't, we haven't told anybody yet, but we lost her. But for the family to know through their grief and pain, right as she was passing, that Vermonters were thinking about her, it's just such a gift. It's such a gift that can never be repaid. So thank you, Elaine. Thank you, Emerge. Thank you so much for giving Ludenia the honor that she never fully received when she was serving. Thank you. Thank you for being online, Bill, watching the ceremony. I'm so glad you could see us honor your mom. Yes. <laughs> Kaya, Sadia, Keisha, thank you for this heartfelt presentation of this award. And thank you for honoring the memory of Lavania Dorsey Bright with your work, because you are carrying on in her footsteps. Thank you all as well to every woman of color who is here tonight, who is trained with us, and who is serving in office. We're grateful to you. I have one more toast I'd like to make, and that is to our wonderful founder, Madeline Cunin. Happy birthday. We're so glad you're here. Would all of you please join me in singing happy birthday to Madeline? <laughs> Please, everyone, have a cupcake in honor of Madeline. And now I know we're 
the main reason after all the honoring we did this evening for all of you to be here was to do some dancing. Because we don't get to dance very often. So I'm going to just hold your attention for a few more moments and then we're going to get down. So I really want to thank everybody for coming this evening. Our parties, Emerge parties, they have a great vibe. They just do. And this is party season. We're all, we all see each other at all the same events, but there's something special about Emerge Vermont's parties, and this one is the very best one we have ever had. And thank you so much, everyone, for being here tonight. I want to thank our host committee for helping us organize this event. Our host committee is chaired by our uh, honorary chair, Madeline Cunin, but former treasurer Beth Pierce, Mary Sullivan, Tim German, former Lieutenant Governor Molly Gray, Senator Keisha Rom Hinsdale, Senator Ruth Hardy, Speaker Jill Kowinski, Anna Lezak, Julia Barnes, Attorney General Charity Clark, and Christine Hallquist. Thank you for your efforts in bringing this party off. Thank you so much to the Emerge Cabinet for all your hard work to make this event happen. And I'd like to just take a second to thank some of our sponsors this evening. Congresswoman Becca Ballant, Senator Peter Welch, Dottie Deans and Lydia Spitzer, Dwayne and Laura Peterson, Jason Lorber and Aplum Consulting, Lisa Steele, Donna Carpenter, Ernie Pomerlo, Mike DeSanto, Keisha Ron Hinsdale, Act Blue, Dick and Diana Beattie, Rep. Tiff Blumley and Liz Shane, Attorney General Jared Cherry Clark, Joan Lennis, Kate McLaughlin, Jake Perkins Parkinson, Treasurer Mike P. Jack, and the Vermont Democratic Party. And you can check out, thank you all sponsors. There are scores of sponsors, allies, mentors, and advocates who are here to help us pull this party off and to support the work of Emerge Vermont. You can check out all their pictures on the slideshow and in the digital program that you can scan on your table. And we're thrilled to be here to celebrate our last 10 years and the future 10 years. What's going to happen next? We're just going to keep electing more women to run for office. We're going to train them. And we're just going to take over the State House. We're going to get all six constitutional officers. We are going to continue. We're not stopping. And we can't do it without all of you. So I have a favor to ask you tonight. We have, we have two generous donors who have offered a $1,500 match to us tonight. So there are QR codes all along the walls that say contribute to Emerge Vermont. Please give generously to help us meet that match. $1,500, it's not gonna take a lot of folks to meet that match, but really would love for you to help us do that. So thank you so much.